Hi, hi. One word a day. I'm Sophie, your pilot into the universe of Chinese. Today is Christmas Eve, I guess. So, Merry Christmas, 2022. And if you're viewing from the future, um, this is the special day that we are. Um, I'm going to share my after a year long of doing this program, my understanding of the Chinese language. Um, hopefully from a higher elevated viewpoint. So Chinese is after over a year, I realized of all the attributes of Chinese versus English, this is crash course two. So you can go back to crash course one where I talk mostly about the six core attributes of Chinese language. I realized among them, the most fun part of it is Chinese is so contextual, contextual. And I came up with a theory, I call it contextual coupling. You will see it on the next page. But over here, just a quick review of what Chinese make it so special. Chinese language is not inflectional. So we don't have nouns uh, in gender. We don't have verbs in tense. Like we just use the essential meanings there. We don't need to inflect, inflect them to suit different gender or time um, value of that. So that's the charming part of the language. It's, it's kind of easy in that sense. And then a very obvious one visually is logographical. It's each frame is like a picture. So all the time in the past over a year time, I've been looking at and sharing so many of Chinese characters, I try to dissemble it to come like to build it up from ground level. Each stroke, each character, within each character, how many sub characters we have, and within each um, sub character, how they, what's their original meaning, how they form together, and how these two components form together to make this meaning. And contextual is the one next to that because each Chinese character. For the majority of them are multitasking, like they have multiple meanings. If you just say one Chinese character, one at a time, a Chinese person, listener, would not tell exactly which word you're saying, because we have multiple, same pronunciation, different character um, words there, right? So different characters, they look differently, but they sound the same. So that's that's one thing. And second, if you don't pair it with an, another character, just by even when we look at this one singular character, it's hard to tell exactly what you mean. We have to understand that through context by what other characters you're placing this character with, then we make sense, oh, this is the meaning you mean because each character have multiple meanings. It's um, each one is multitasker. Uh, well, actually, it's not accurate. Uh, it's multiple meaning, Mo not multitasker, because in each context, then the meaning of it is definitive. It's locked down in the sense of it's not fluid anymore. Like we can pin down the exact meaning of that character. And it's not multitasking in the sense of it doesn't mean simultaneously different meaning. Um, only when you don't couple it with something else, you cannot tell exactly which meaning of that character you're using um, and logical. And because through this process of building characters from its subcomponents to the main mainframe of the pictures, that we have to have a sort of logic about why we combine this and this to mean that, right? And also in a context like from this character um, combined with that character, why together they mean something else. So we have to, as, as a language, to make sense of the, the new learners of this language, to have a sense of logic. 
for the most part, just like English. English isn't logical for the most part, but sometimes there are jumps, there are irregularities, there are exceptions. Um, Chinese too, not everything are explainable. The whole time I've been trying to explain it. For the most part, we can explain it. And for the most part, we can find the logic between things. Why things are put together this way? Why this character and that character combine to mean this? Um, but sometimes we have to acknowledge the mystery of the language. Okay, and then C and V are the pronunciations. The Chinese always ended with a vowel. So every time I was speaking, it's not as fluid, you know, as a native English speaker, because Chinese, we kind of, buh, 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 each individual one, each syllable, each syllable either is a vowel only, or sometimes, I mean, for the most part, have the consonant plus a vowel structure. That's the most commonly seen structure, but each one have to have a vowel to start with, right? Um, but on, because we only have so many consonants that your mouth can <laughs> manage to pronounce um, and so many vowels, the combination of that, you know, the permutation of that is very limited. And we don't have multiple syllables either. Like we don't have, like logo, graphy, there are five syllables in this one character, uh, one word, right? Chinese don't have that. We only have one consonant plus one vowel make one audible sound. And sometimes get rid of the, the vowel. Uh, we only have, uh, I mean, get rid of a consonant, but always have the vowel because vowel is the, the hearing part, right? Without a vowel, you don't have a sound. So with that, they're, they're so limiting, I mean, limited ways of combining. So we have to add another dimension, which is tones. Chinese are notorious, not Chinese are, Chinese is, as a language collectively, is notorious of its four tones. It's very confusing to the new language learners. And if you make a different tone, so you attach a different tone to this combination of a consonant and a vowel, it's a different meaning. And you accidentally mispronounce this plus something else, it could be funny sometimes. Okay, so that's the six essentials of Chinese features as a language distinctively from the Romanized language, which are English, French, all that, you know, character-based, this audio-based uh, languages. So Chinese is logographical, it's a visual-based language. And today in a crash course two, which is my Christmas gift to my uh, viewers, that contextual coupling is my main theory. That's my contribution to the understanding of myself. Like I first realized that, and then I want to share it to hopefully make sense to you of what Chinese is about. So here I'm giving you an example. From episode, um, a couple of episodes ago, not a couple of like uh, dozens or scores of episodes ago, um, An Shen Li Ming, we talked about that. And today we focus on Li Ming. So, Give you the detailed example here. Li has three meanings at least. I only list the three because I mean, graphically it's beautiful to look at. So Li, we have coupled with Li Ji, it means instantly. And if coupled with a Cheng, after Cheng, well, Cheng Li means establish. And then if we couple with Zhan Li means standing. So, you know, three meanings, depends on who you couple it with. So now mean. If we have um, mean plus sheng, it means life, sheng mean. And mean plus lin, it means order, mean, lin. Yeah, sound a little bit weird, right? Uh, mean, lin means order. And then mean, yun means destiny. So three possibilities, at least with this character. So when we single out, we only look at the li. We know it could mean multiple things. And we don't exactly know what that means. So for the language to function on its own, it's really difficult. It can only stand, so to speak, it can only stand when you have two feet, <laughs> right? So when you have a li and you couple it with me, in that context, they, they're mutually providing context to each other, right? When li coupled with me, then you know, oh, actually, 
among the three, at least the three meanings of Li and the three meanings of Ming. This is the meaning, Li, Ming, in this context. That means establish your destiny. In that, in that bigger context, that means establish your livelihood. Your destiny is kind of like a, what you're destined to do, right? So that's your livelihood. So Li, Ming, Anshu Li, Ming, basically is a find the comfort zone. Uh, find the the track of life that you're going to stay on that lane, and that's your destiny. That's your establish the the process of establish your destiny or your livelihood. Okay, so this is just an example of that. Now, another overview of what this language is about is I want to point out the building blocks of this language, which are the Chinese characters like the Li and Min we talked about. Individually, they could be multiple things, and coupled, they lock down. It's kind of like a double uh, numbered uh, lock, right? And and then only when there's two connected, then you lock it. You can open the meaning of together. Li mean it means something specific. Okay, so now compassion of English and Chinese. Individual vocabulary, you can see individual vocabulary means individual characters, a lot, a lot more of English than Chinese. Chinese only have 8,000, that's commonly used Chinese language. And English is at least three times or four times of the vocabulary of than, than Chinese. And then in the current dictionary, okay, <laughs> it's at least more than three times thicker than Chinese language. And then, historically existed so older like died past like older in english that's not in use anymore but they ever existed before us 2022 one million okay so chinese proportionally is it's not that dramatic but it's again a third of the english words of chinese variations ever existed and then i guess life progress, society progress, and then some characters no longer in use and others are using more. So that's some stay with us, some got disappeared, kind of extinct um, in the evolution of language, right? So now we have a comparison, we have a sense of scale of in terms of vocabulary. I call it the building blocks, right? And then within this 8,000 words, I can pick out at least, at least, three major categories, which are physical, physical, intellectual, and social. I like to read it <laughs> like that. Physical is the easiest one to understand. It represents the world we can see with our eyes. It's objective world, basically. And then objective in the sense of, um, i give you two examples here. I mean, multiple examples, actually. So here is our tree symbol. We have this upward turning, downward turning uh, arches, right? Connected with a vertical line, that's our tree symbol. Now we combine this tree symbol with different other symbols to create a different meanings. We have a sun embedded in the tree. That means the sun is still rising, not far away from the horizon. And that's, that's why you can see the vision of the sun is still embedded in between the tree. And that means it's rising, it means east. Sunrise, it means east. So there are some logical deduction over there, but that means east. And over here, it means the future because now the tree is uh, weighing down by the supposedly the wheat or the, the crops, whatever you're growing are weighing down the plant. And that's something as an agricultural society that um, you're looking forward to. You the whole year's labor, you're working toward this harvesting time, and that represents the future, the hope. So this is our future, the word of future. I mean, I'm picking each one, the essential, the beginner, uh, the primary meaning of each, and each one can mean multiple things, just following this you know, uh, contextual coupling rule as well. And here is weight, and actual weight and the lie, both of them, so lime is coming, something is going to come. And way is this uh, not yet coming yet. <laughs> and actually today, just just I just make this connection, way and light. Uh, when we pair way and light together, that means future. 
and future composed of something in the cooking, in the making. Wait means not here yet. So this is, if it's a, a plant growing, and this is double layer, on top of the canopy of the plant means something is growing, is flourishing, is, is fuller, become fuller, right? So that something is not coming to fruitation like this, like a draping down yet. So this is the result of that. And But this is on the way, in the cooking, in the oven, so to speak. So for agricultural society, that means something is growing on top of the trees or branches or your crops. And this, when it comes to here, this is a fruitation. And combined together, that's for agrarian society to look forward to. That's our future. So this is something not yet fruited. And this is something already going to come. So together is future. So you can see both of, I mean, all three symbols surrounding this tree symbol or our plant symbol have this connection and they make sense through this one character. So through like adding some other elements, visual elements to this frame to make different meanings. So all of them um, kind of are representing our physical world. And of course, like something like describing time, something to come, something in the future, not yet happened, but something in the ha uh, in the in, in the coming, in the making. This is what you're farming for. These images, even if it became abstract, it still came from the visual world, objective world that we live in, right? This plant based. Okay, so the other ones, I'll just go quickly because it's going to take a long time. Um, we have a horse symbol. It's a representation of a horse, the manes of a horse, the four uh, hoofs or legs of a horse, the tail of a horse, the main structure of the horse body is already depicted over there. And you can see horse paired with bamboo or horse paired with this net. Each, when this horse symbol paired with something else, some other objective elements that we can visually see in our physical world can mean then different things become, you know, almost like a small frame of storytelling over there to tell us what, what that is. So do what means something slow moving because horse are fast moving animals for us in, rele uh, in relevance to human speed, right? Horse is so fast. But if you made it uh, from bamboo, that means something it's not a real horse, right? It's a bamboo horse. So it's going to be slow. And here um, we have this nest in front of a horse. That means containing of the horse. That means disciplining or scolding somebody. So both of them based from the horse symbols. So now here we have, um, we have the bird symbol here. Um, and then we have this, zhou, zhou means, um, means complete. It came from this uh, basket for water container. So what water container, that's kind of a paneled of wood panel, right? And then combined together uh, to take water and have this handle thing. You see both of them are there. These are the bucket uh, symbol. And then together with a bird, that's, that means a kind of a bird. So we pronounce it as diao, and then it means a type of bird. And diao actually is a some bird that's high hovering. It's um kind of like an eagle. I mean, I'm not a and you know I don't, I'm not a bird um person, so I don't exactly can can tell. But this means this bird have a higher vision. They hovering high above, so they see a bigger scope of things. And this zhou simply means um. Not only I came from the bucket, but also talking, like talking uh, with a bu bucketing frame. That means when you speak, you address all directions um, because your water are going to flow uh, whichever short panel you have, right? So you have to make sure the bucket are evenly paneled. You address in e each direction. So that simply means complete, like you have a complete vision of things. You're covering all points of perspectives. And here, Zhou, when it coupled with this fabric symbol, that becomes Chou. That means something neatly uh, or tightly neaten. Something you, uh, in terms of fabric, is, is dense. So Chou, 
paired with fabric becomes dense. So now we have the dog symbol. So this is the dog ear, the dog, dog body, kind of abstract, a side view of dog symbol. And dog, when paired with fire symbol and meat, <laughs> this simply means cooking dog for food. Okay, dog used to be, I guess, from this, this is evidence that historically Chinese society eat dog for food. Okay, don't freak out. That happened before in history. And now here we also have dog, but we have the, the sun and the moon. Notice here, they look the same, but this is meat. This is the moon. And then we have soil. And then we have this top left corner to mean this is a high ground or some 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 cliff, like a natural environment with a cliff. And somehow all together, this pack together means, well, on the top, it means cooking, right? Cooking dog meat, eventually extracted into cooking. It's not necessarily cooking dog anymore, um, but here it means pressing. So my view is, okay, with the soil at the bottom, you stack up, like you put a, you throw a dog there, you, you have the sun and the moon there, and then you kind of corner it under this frame. It's kind of pressing everything down. I mean, I have to come up with some story, but you see here, physical representation of dog, bird, bucket, horse, all these are physical words. And when it compared with other physical objects together, we can create meaning. Okay, intellectual. Intellectual is a little bit more abstract because now we're not only talking about objective things, we're going further, one step further. We're talking about our own internal feeling. And when it's internal, lots of times the characters came from the organs on our body. And we, we assign the organs some meanings. For example, we have the eye symbol, which originally looked like an eyeball. Eventually it got abstracted into this, right? So everything with the eyeball in it, kind of describing the observing of things. So we have eyeball and this is a human. So human see with the eyeball, like examine something. And here is eyeball plus the bushy <laughs> eyebrows and the eyebrows kind of frame the eyeball. That means eyebrows, okay. And then we have eyeball plus the wood. That means taking the time to look at the observing the plant. We just use plant as a generic thing out there because for agrarian society, um, looking at your plant, looking at a crop is essential for survival, right? So you have to observe closely what's happening to that plant and then this is a heart symbol. To me, it looks like the chamber of the heart and then the tubes coming in and out of the, you know, the blood lines pumping in and out. And then the third line, I view it as the, you know, the energy line to supply the blood for the heart itself. So there are three tubes attached to the heart. And when it comes to heart, it's a sign with um, thinking. The so heart, just like in English, Heart was a, was assigned as the as the brain function as the cognitive. So here we have the heart coupled with looking at the trees, right? That means thinking. So you have to mentally process something. Not only you're looking at it, you put your heart in it. So that's you know heartfully looking at the things. That's our thinking. And now uh, here is our verbalized intention because we have okay heart again, right? It's mental activity. And then out on the top, it means music, it means vocal mu music, especially. We have the mouth symbol. We have something in the mouth. When we use something in the mouth, put in there, that means something sweet, something tasty. That's why we hold, hold it. Um, and then the top, we have the tip of the tongue. And this arrow is kind of pointing toward the mouth. Um, this structure over here is the tongue. And then we we'll add something into the mouth that means sweet tongue. So sweet tongue, the rest sweet talker. And then the top horizontal lines are the sound bites coming out of the tongue, the tongue. And so we have the whole thing, sweet speaking, basically sweet speaking for Chinese is vocal singing. 
singing your heart out, basically, is to show your intention. Okay, and then here, this is our nose symbol. Nose bridge with two nostrils, just like eyes, eventually got stacked up, become vertical, not horizontal anymore. I mean, interesting, right? So this is a nostril symbol. And because nose is the center of the face, right? Just look at my face. It's the center of the, of the face. So a lot of times when people are self-referral, pointing to themselves, they're not, they could do this, but they're pointing to their nose most of my way, right? Because it's the center of the face. So we here become self-referral or looking at self in this character. And when you look at the self and you have the well, no, here it's a nose plus the heart. Actually, that depicts the ancient understanding of your repository. Is it a repository? Respiratory, your breathing function. So it's coming from your nose and it was understood as going to your heart instead of your lungs. So at the time, probably the functions of lung and heart is not separated yet. So perceived back then, nose to heart is our breathing. And here, uh, we have the nose, but we have a frame on top of that. So that that eventually means the head. We use this, the most the center feature on your face, and plus a frame of that means the whole head. And then we have the the body depicted almost like sideways, uh, sitting, reclining over there. So the whole thing means big headed person over there, right? And the left side is think is um is pointing toward upward um it's kind of a spear so we have this upward pointing and also big headed the whole thing means the top the top of something i mean it's it's obvious right um, but it's up for interpretation and eventually people view that's a reasonable way to depicting what is a top because the head is the top of your body and we have this arrow next to it to, to signify that's the top we're talking about. Okay, here we have the, again, the head symbol with <laughs> just have the nose, zoom up view of the nose in the middle. And this is the head. And these are the hairs. So kind of a crazy anti-gravity, you know, crazy hair over there. And here the whole thing just means the head and with the hair kind of head. Okay, so now you can see we kind of attach the nose, the heart, the eye, sort of with our interaction with the world, right? Either it's in thinking function, intention function, breathing, right? Or like looking. So these symbols, they came from the physical world, but because they grew on our body, they kind of was used to internalize to not internal, to, to, to depict our internal world as much as we can. And some misunderstanding of how breathing works, right, happened, and that captured in the language. Social. Okay, a big part of our lives of being human is being social. So interactions with other people. Over here, some characters are created just like that for that function. So we have this human figure looks almost like an English letter R, right? Without, you know, getting too close. But basically it's a two standing on, standing on two legs. That's the essential definition for human. Human are up, upward standing animal. So this is human and we have two humans next to each other. That means one falling another. And we have two hand I mean, from, from here, here, there's a little bit of jump. I mean, here is a double of something, this doubling. When you have two hands over there, that means a pair. So two hands, so three finger hands stacking up together, that means a pair. So you see the same symbol repeated can mean something, right? And then we have this human figure, kind of streamlined and narrowed to the, to one side to mean it's something related to human activity. And now we have the two hand symbol. You see three finger hand symbol again, but placed uh, side by side like this. That means, um, you know, respectively holding in whole hand, in both hands to somebody, right? And then uh, with, a, with the eyes, eyeball on top of that. 
wait, I cannot forget what I mean. Something altogether means promotion, something like that. Or um, actually, no, I remember. Okay, it means together because here is not an eyeball. Actually, I'm mistaken. Um, checking back to the original language rendering, even if now it looks just like an eyeball, but it was depicted originally with some cornered edge on the top. And but because corner edge is too difficult to draw, right? Eventually it got simplified, round off the corner, just all of a shape. But it was a cookware. So it was a type of cook, big heavy cookware. And then two hands are kind of a you know kind uh, respectfully showing you um holding food basically or attending to the to the stove basically together, right? So attending to stoves together with other people, that whole thing means together. So this communal experience of cooking together was depicted in here. Here we have another <laughs> human regulation. It, it means a regulation. The reason why is because, okay, we have a three finger hand there holding a big brush over here. And then here is a walking sign. So three repeated lines footstep and the footstep plus um, the hand holding a brush right, written down something. That means something, some written orders of how you should walk, how you should behave. So that becomes our mm, kind of a law, okay? Now we have generic human figure, ungendered human figure. This is gender, this is woman specific. So woman, as you can see, is kind of visually depicting with the hands holding, folded in front, right? And with a lot of hip. And this is a physical, like a main features of behavior wise, and as well as um, anatomy wise, it's looking like a woman. Woman under a dome with a chimney on top, that's a domestic space. So domestic space with a woman inside, that's our security or safety sign. I guess woman in a in a in home at home supposed to feel secure, right? Versus here now, <laughs> this is funny. Domestic space, right? Same domestic space. Now we replace the woman symbol with this symbol, which is a mouse, and also with three diagonal lines stringed on a vertical line. This diagonal lines means something chaotic. Because normally Chinese wear horizontal, vertical, you know, most for the most part, right? Um, unless you're depicting like a hand or eyes or something with curve. But when when you see diagonal lines, that's something um, unusual. Chinese language also here, language creators use diagonal lines to mean something unstable, something messy, something chaotic. And when you speak symbol, this is a mouth symbol. When you speak create chaos under the domestic living space. That's our definition of harm. Chinese have a saying of harm comes from the mouth. So what you speak um, matters a lot. So that harm image originally come from this domestic domain of speaking chaotically, maybe arguing or something, something not in harmony under the roof. Okay, so now we have woman symbol plus this is our death symbol, which is bottom left corner means lower ground. And then we have this human figure kind of flattened out. I mean, it's just for visual. Uh, visually, it makes sense, right? You have to extend it to the same frame width. But it's a human figure on top of that. That means that figure, that human figure is trying to go in underground, uh, either to hide for temporarily or hide forever, which is death. So eventually hide forever becomes more, more used to concept that becomes death. So death plus woman, it's something delo someone delusional. My explanations, uh, what was, um, I mean, there are different stories, but death and woman, woman representing sex, death and sex, these two things are the most torturing <laughs> or mysterious themes for men who most likely, presumably, like men used to be the language creator, language user for the most part. So they have to, you know, 
attribute something cha chaotic or some 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 bad meaning to women <laughs> probably uh, but I mean they attribute a good meaning to women as well, right? I have to be fair here. Um, so domestic plus woman means security, means safety, means peace, good meaning. And here, death plus woman means delusional. So probably death and, wo and woman can cause somebody to be delusional, to lose the sense of reality. Or it could be woman, like a widowed woman handling trauma of some some dear ones passed away and she could get delusional. However way you explain, explain it, woman plus death, delusional. Okay, now we have woman and this five vertical lines connected by two horizontal bars. So this means kind of a jarring, kind of a fence image, right? And then we have a woman sign next to it. Here is a sound maker. I have to acknowledge sometimes it's a sound maker, at least right now, at the moment, I cannot make up a theory, uh, improvise, of why this fence plus woman means slow walking. This together means slow walking. I guess I can come up with right now. Um, so woman walking within the fence means Within the fence means, okay, back then women are mostly not in public. You, you seldom can see women, especially unmarried women, doesn't have the freedom to walk on the public street, have to be accompanied, right? Uh, and have to be like within uh, a fence, within a domain. And women were taught back then cannot walk any faster, definitely not faster than men, right? So anyways, this is depiction of woman, womanly, slow walking and i guess some of you probably heard of the wrap the feet of women so it's, it was a fashion probably two three hundred years ago um that women got their feet deformed wrapped in tight cloth to make their feet tiny teeny so that they cannot really run or walk regularly they they would topple um and that create an image of such a weakened woman and that's to the appeal of man back then i'm so happy i'm not i did not live i do not live in that era okay so slow walking and a woman probably have some historical reason to pair together that's all i hope you enjoy the crash course too and my very brief i mean over half an hour introduction of the language from kind of a higher elevated view, I hope, um, give you a sense of what Chinese is about. It's contextual. And you have to couple it with one character with another, at least the two characters string together to make to make the meaning firm or non-fluid, otherwise meaning are fluid. And also the character, essential Chinese characters, 8,000 of them, and we can see how the characters were created from the domain of physical world, intellectual understanding ourselves and our relationship of us with others. So a ton of characters were created in this way. So from the, these vintage point, we can kind of see how language, Chinese language work as a graphical language, a local graphical language. And I hope that um, brief introduction picked your interest to further investigating and exploring this amazing language with me. And thank you for tuning in and Merry Christmas again.